important topic that we are today uh, in this session we are going to study about is pedigree analysis and so when you come to the uh, pedigree analysis we can able to study about the inheritance pattern of a specific trait or a disease or any abnormality or the any kind of the genetic disorder and so uh, pedigree it's, it shows the uh, symbols as well as uh, uh, lines are present horizontal and the vertical lines they're all are present we are going to study uh, see about all those uh, different types of the patterns that are present and but in the chart showing the record of the inheritance certain traits over the two or more generations that we can able to study in the month. And this pedigree uh, analysis help us to work about the possible genotypes and, uh, from the knowledge of the respect to a uh, phenotypes. And. So what, when they are given the phenotypes of the particular trait or the abnormality or a disease is known. So this uh, pedigree chart help us to uh, work out the possibility of the different uh, genotypes. And. And it also help us to uh, study about the inheritance of uh, a particular trait. It can be a, a dominant or a recessive trait. And the possible genetic makeup of a person of a trait can be uh, known with the help of this pedigree chart. So uh, as in case of the lower organisms like uh, lower organisms like the microorganisms or if you take the any other organisms in which the genetical most of the genetical experiments were conducted and like the pea plants or some other organisms. And, so such kind of control costs across a sun that are not possible in case of human beings. And so because such kind of the control crosses are not possible in the human beings, so there is a device was uh, actually uh, invented and, and uh, uh, for the, to make it to study the trait in case of human beings. And so an alternate studies were made to study the a family history about the inheritance of a particular trait. So that is a, one of the main significance of the pedigree analysis. And is, is, is to study the control crosses in case of the human beings and because which is not uh, uh, which is very uh, difficult to study in case of the human beings and so the lifespan of the human beings is very uh, uh, life is more compared to the other living organisms and the crossing uh, is also very difficult among them so it is it's very difficult to study in the, the, a particular trait or disorder or an abnormality in case of the human beings uh, human beings and so for that purpose the scientists have a de uh, devised an approach and, uh, uh, called as pedigree analysis and now coming to the uh, different types of the symbols that are used in case of this pedigree analysis are suppose if it is represented in the form of a, a square or a box and then it is called as a male and if it is represented by the a circle uh, it is a female and, and if the sex is unspecified then it is represented as in the form of a uh, twisted a box and then uh, these are all individuals uh, if they are not highlighted are not shaded and then it represents that they are not affected and so if at all they are shaded and are darkened inside these boxes or circles, it means that these individuals are affected and are, they are carrying that particular trait or a disorder is shown in them. And now uh, a cross made in between the uh, male and female, both are get connected by means of a horizontal line. It represents that that's a mating. And if they are uh, uh, connected by means of the two horizontal lines, uh, then it is called, it is a mating that occurs in between the uh, closely related uh, individuals and that is consagminous a uh, mating and then uh, the first generation that is a parental generation and the offsprings are the next progeny, they are get connected with the help of a vertical uh, line. And so the, it's a male and female that represents the parental generation, uh, the next male and female represents the uh, first generation or their progeny which are get connected by means of the uh, vertical line so uh, then coming to the uh, the parental generation and the next generation called the progeny if they are shaded or darkened that represents that uh, whatever the individual or the progeny that is born uh, is actually get affected with the uh, disease and because it is a square it represented and darkened the male child is actually uh, affected with the uh, disease and then uh, if it's that in sequentially if the several number of the individual squares or the box are given and if they are not shaded then we uh, uh, it gives the knowledge that they are actually unaffected offspring son now uh, before going into the, all these charts uh, let us uh, discuss about the some of the hints and that will help us to uh, uh, this pedigree analysis and 
Now there are the few, few statements and if you are uh, uh, learn about these uh, statements so that it will easy uh, us to uh, predict this pedigree analysis of a given charter. So in the examination point of view uh, like this the charts may be given for you and based on that uh, you need to uh, you need to predict the uh, genotype or you need to uh, know about the what kind of the disorder that is given or the what kind of the trait is actually get inheriting on. And uh, you need to uh, write about the uh, genotypes in the uh, first generation or the second or the third generation, kind of the disorder that is actually inheriting from the one generation to the other generation. So these kinds of the uh, questions may be asked in the examination point of view. So for that uh, to know that you need to know these statements. And suppose uh, in the given chart and so whatever the uh, pedigree chart is given for example, uh, take this example before going into the in detail. And so for example in a given chart what the parents the both the parents are get uh, given like this and the represented in the first generation the male and the female children are given on. Now if the one of the parent is actually get affected with the disorder and like this one and all the progeny are also get affected on. One of the parent is affected and all the progeny are also affected it gives an indication that uh, it, with the help of this it will uh, it, which will it easily can able to predict that what kind of the uh, disorder it is. It is surely an autosomal a dominant disorder and if one of the parent is get affected and uh, any of the parent and if not, it's not the female or even the male is also affected. So out of the male and female parents if one of the parent is affected and the, all the progeny are also got affected. Now the disorder we can able to predict that it is an autosomal dominant. So in case of the autosomal dominant there are the two cases again it will uh, appear and one is homozygous dominant and another one is the heterozygous uh, dominant. How do you able to get able to predict that one? And so if the one of the parent is affected and if the all the progeny are affected irrespective of the sex then it is called as autosomal dominant disorder. And whereas uh, one of the parent is got affected and uh, most of the progeny are get affected irrespective of the sex and uh, like. So one of the parent is get affected and in the, pro, in the given progeny most of the progeny are get affected irrespective of the uh, sex and or most and. So uh, one of the progeny is not get affected it means that uh, the the whatever the disorder that is given or the trait that is given which is getting inherited with the help of this chart it will help us to predict that it is an autosomal dominant but autosomal uh, uh, dominant in which it represents the heterozygous condition. For example uh, if you write the genotypes for this one and so uh, here we are considering as autosomal dominant with a homozygous condition and whereas the unaffected individual we represented it as a, a small a and a small a. And now that when it get inherited all the individuals that we shown are in this type one. So one of the parent is get affected and, and all the progeny are got affected irrespective of the sex then it is called as autosomal dominant and but which is in present in a homozygous condition. Coming over here and here uh, one of the parent is get affected and the most of the progeny are affected irrespective of the sex and uh, some progeny are not affected then we can uh, predict that this is actually an uh, heterozygous uh, dominant one which is an autosomal one. So in this case if you write the genotypes for this one and anyway the individual that is remain unaffected is represented as homozygous recessive condition and here we can take it as uh, autosomal dominant recessive one. So whoever the individuals and are the progeny that are all are affected can be the uh, in present in the heterozygous condition and the unaffected individual is present in the uh, homozygous recessive condition. So based on that one so these are the two statements and so a very simple statement with, with which you can able to predict the kind of the uh, disorder that is given. And so under this uh, we have got the two examples which are given over here and for uh, in, the, in, the, in this case. And now just look at over here and one of the uh, disease that is we are going to study about under the autosomal dominant is myotonic dystrophy. And so in this myotonic dystrophy uh, one of the parent is get affected and the especially the female parent and the male parent remain unaffected and in the given uh, the uh, given uh, progeny and whoever the progeny are there in this progeny uh, 
only the males as well as the females. So, irrespective of that sex, it is actually getting inherited to the next generation. So, whenever it is irrespective of the sex, in equal proportions, it is inheriting, then we can predict that it is actually an autosomal condition. And because one parent is get affected and irrespective of the sex, it is inheriting to the next progeny. So, it is an autosomal dominant, but given in an uh, given in an heterozygous condition. Suppose if it is the uh, affected this uh, affected individual is present in an dominant condition, then all the progeny are get affected irrespective of the sex. But very few are the most of the progeny irrespective of the sex are only get affected. So it is an uh, forms as an example for autosomal dominant and which is also uh, present in the heterozygous condition. In case of the autosomal recessive condition, how to predict the autosomal recessive condition? If the uh, both the parents remain unaffected, if both the parents remain unaffected, irrespective of the sex and the sum of the progeny are got affected. And so both the parents remain unaffected, irrespective of the sex, some of the progeny are uh, got affected then we can consider it as uh, or we can uh, come to the conclusion that it is actually autosomal recessive disorder. And so uh, autosomal recessive, for example, uh, both the parents remain unaffected and that means uh, the unaffected condition is actually the um, present in the heterozygous condition. Anyway, we are considering as a recessive, recessive always expressed in the homozygous condition and the individuals that are uh, appear in the progeny and they can be either present in the homozygous condition or the heterozygous condition. They can be a present in a homozygous or heterozygous. So based on the uh, uh, based on the next generation, it will help us to predict whether they are homozygous or heterozygous. And so uh, for example, uh, in the next generation, if you take the male uh, parent uh, in the next generation, then some of the progeny that are given are get affected and again and so some of the progeny are got affected it means that so the both the individuals and how do you predict that uh, the first progeny and the, uh, the progeny which is got married with the another male and uh, based on this uh, the third generation we are talking about this is a first generation this is a second generation this is a third generation so in the third generation, irrespective of the sex, most of the progeny are got affected. And so based on this progeny result which is present in the third generation, it will help us to predict the genotype of this uh, individual or the progeny. And so here the individual is, uh, we have got a doubt that whether it is a homozygous or heterozygous. And because this character is getting appeared and we are considering it as an autosomal recessive, so both these individuals and the progeny and the one which has got the marriage with the male has got this condition and both should be uh, present in a heterozygous condition so that only you can have this condition. Again the, this individual can be ag again either homozygous or heterozygous condition. So based on this uh, the uh, progeny that is obtained and the disorder or a trait that is get inherited, it will help us to know the genotype of this individual son, whether it is a homozygous or heterozygous. So uh, we'll make it simple and like for example, uh, one of the parent is get affected and most of the progeny are get affected, some of the progeny remain unaffected, then it is uh, irrespective of the sex. This is autosomal dominant given in a heterozygous condition. In case of the autosomal recessive, uh, parent remain unaffected and uh, some of the progeny are got affected uh, irrespective of the sex and then we can come to the conclusion that it is actually it can be an autosomal recessive one. For example, uh, here in this chart the two parents remain unaffected and uh, some of the uh, progeny are given as affected irrespective of the sex and so uh, and in the next case uh, the the third children is actually progeny is got married with an another male and it is again get appears in case of the next progeny. And so uh, it based on this uh, also same whatever the example that we worked out over here and that means it is also it gives an uh, indication that it's an autosomal uh, recessive uh, trait disorder. Example is like the uh, sickle cell anemia. And we come to the take the certain examples of the sex linker. It is very uh, easy for us to get estimate 
what kind of the disorder it will be if it is given as a while link run. Suppose in the given pedigree chart whether the parents are the progeny all the males are got affected and, and the females remain unaffected and. so it will easily uh, help us to the uh, in predicting the what kind of the uh, trait it is and so it is surely an and y linked inheritance because in case of the y linked inheritance we already studied in the sex linked inheritance that y linked inheritance always uh, appear in case of the males and, and they are always uh, pass from the uh, are inherited from the parents to the male parent to the male progeny and to their uh, grandchildren so it is always male to male and that's what we said called holandric uh, inheritance and uh, holandric inheritance so y linked genes and are always inherited from the male parent to the uh, male parent to the uh, son son so whoever the number of the sons that are born and all are got affected with this one so if all the progeny starting uh, all the uh, a male son starting from the parental generation to the uh, any number of generation in the all the males are get affected it, we can come to the conclusion that it is uh, it is a, a y linked inheritance son now uh, let's move on to the x linked inheritance son in case of the x linked inheritance we have got the uh, two examples son again whether it is an x linked dominant or x linked uh, recessive one so uh, for example uh, if you take the x linked recessive uh, we know that x linked recessive characters always appear and more in case of male son than female son so there is a slight confusion that will appear uh, especially when predicting the uh, kind of the trait or the disorder in between autosomal recessive and x linked recessive one the how to distinguish in between these two one x linked recessive characters always appear more in case of the males less in case of the female son whereas in autosomal uh, recessive condition irrespective of the sex the inheritance pattern of that particular trait or the disorder will be in equal proportions and that is the only the uh, difference with which we actually uh, worked out this in predicting the genotypes of the particular inheritance and so in this uh, given chart for example uh, the both the parents were remain unaffected and some one of the male is got affected in the generation and suppose in the fifth place if you had given so one of the male parent is got affected and so but the whereas the both the uh, parents remain unaffected and now uh, when that uh, male parent when it is get affected and again in the th in the third generation when we are looking at again it is appearing in the male and as well as in the third generation of the another marriage also if you see that one another uh, male is also got affected so in this given the pedigree chart if you see that one most of the males are got affected and of course the only males are got affected but the male parent remain unaffected and suppose if you think that male parent is also get affected then it is surely an and all the males are get affected it is a while ignorant but in this whole chart females are no, uh, remain unaffected and most of the males and the, uh, are remaining get affected so that with that help we can come to the conclusion that it is a y linked recessive disorder there so many y linked recessive disorders are there for example uh, here we took the color blindness based on that we are actually uh, studied this one and uh, so if you are interested you can write the genotypes of this one and uh, for example uh, uh, xx xy uh, xy is of course the male xx is the uh, female so one of the male progeny is get affected and it means that this uh, male always inherit that uh, uh, affected allele from the mother that means uh, the female parent is actually uh, carrying that allele and so for example capital c and the small c and because one allele is get inherited to the uh, female children so the when it comes to the father all the females are actually remain unaffected and so all the females remain unaffected which means that father should be present in the hom uh, hemizygous condition for that color blindness and so the females can be either uh, uh, they can be either carriers or they can be the uh, homozygous normal and or heterozygous carriers and all the females and how do you predict that the female is actually heterozygous carrier and if you take the in the second generation and the third generation marriage uh, this is a, a male uh, xy and this is a female and xx and now uh, the progeny that are born to this one one of the male is get affected and again uh, male uh, inherit that particular allele from the uh, mother and so xy a uh, small so one of the female is get uh, one of the female is actually carrying this one and so she should be 
uh, a carrier. Whereas uh, our other male is remain unaffected. And when other male is remain unaffected means uh, the mother is should be carry the one dominant allele. So with that help, uh, whatever the progeny that are born from the first generation in the second generation, it will help us to uh, uh, help us to actually know that whether it is an homozygous or heterozygous or a carrier female. And then uh, another male is get remain unaffected. So we can write it as a capital C. And so this will also a capital C. And so like this, uh, so based on the disorder that is get affected, it will help us to, uh, it will help and as to estimate the kind of the genotype that is a given. So a pedigree analysis, it is a, a very easy process. Uh, so based on the very few statements, uh, you can come to the conclusion and, and you can able to write the genotype and, and you can able to uh, predict the what kind of the character trait or the disorder that is inheriting. And. Now then coming to the X-linked dominant or X-linked recessive one. X-linked recessive characters mostly appear more in case of females than males. So whatever the pedigree chart they're given, so we have to see that irrespective of the sex, most of the male progeny are get affected and less number of the females are get affected. Then we can come to the conclusion that it is an X-linked recessive one. Whereas in X-linked dominant, and X -link, as you, we study in the X-linked inheritance, X-linked dominant characters appear more in case of the females than in males. And so in the given entire the chart, more uh, females are get affected and very few number of the males are get affected. Then we can come to the conclusion that it is actually X-linked uh, dominant. And like this, you have got autosomal dominant. In that autosomal dominant, you have to see that whether it is an uh, homozygous or heterozygous. And and again in X-linked, it is a X-linked dominant or X-linked recessive one, then it is a Y-linked. So with the help of these five statements, it is easy for us to uh, uh, help us to estimate the, or predict the genotypes of the given pedigree charted. Let's see the some of the uh, questions that were appeared in the previous entrance examinations based on this concept. And in the first question, uh, the study of the pedigree chart of a certain family given in a figure and, and select the correct conclusion which can be drawn for the uh, character. And so here in this one, uh, a chart is given and uh, some four options are actually uh, given over here. And so based on that, we have to predict that one. The female parent is heterozygous. And here we have got the a male parent and the female parents are given and uh, all the female progeny are get affected and the 50% of the male progeny are affected and the remaining 50% of the male progeny remain unaffected. And how do you know that whether it is an autosomal dominant or this one? As I told you earlier on, if one of the parent is get affected and the most of the progeny are get affected irrespective of the sex, it is obviously the autosomal character. And again, in that autosomal uh, dominant character, whether it is a homozygous or heterozygous son. If it is homozygous, all progeny should be uh, get affected. And most of the progeny are affected, very few progeny are remain unaffected, then it should be uh, autosomal dominant heterozygous son. So, so with the help of that, it will help us to the female parent is actually heterozygous. Parent, uh, if you see the second option, the parents could not have uh, had a, a normal daughter for this character. And so uh, it, it is not possible for the giving like a, a normal daughter by looking into this chart. And the trait under uh, study could not be a color blindness. And so uh, it is uh, actually it is not a, a sex linked character. And the male parent is homozygous dominant. And Suppose if the whatever the male parent that is given is a homozygous dominant condition, then all the progeny should be get affected. And so it is not happening with this case. And so the female parent is actually present in the heterozygous condition. Let's move on to the second question. Which one of the following symbols and its representation used in human pedigree analysis is correct? And the first one is uh, two horizontal lines with which the male and female, uh, the squares and the circles are get connected. It means that it's a marriage that occurs in between the close relatives and they are called consanguineous marriages. And then another one is the uh, unaffected males. No, it's actually female, unaffected females. Then it is the uh, male and uh, male uh, affected. And so all the remaining, all these three are, are wrong options. And then move on to the third one. In case of the third one, Again, uh, they are only mentioning that uh, it is an uh, autosomal recessive it is given. So only thing that you have to uh, write over here, th what kind of the genotypes they are. And so for example, uh, if you look at that one, in this, 
both the parents remain unaffected and uh, one of the progeny got get affected and it means that if one of the parent is get affected and if all the progeny are not then uh, based on that we can able to predict that it is autosomal recessive or autosomal uh, dominant. So if you write over here uh, uh, if it is autosomal we are considering at autosomal recessive one. So both the parents remain unaffected over here and if the both the parents are unaffected one of the progeny get affected. And so is recessive condition always appears in homozygous condition. So the progeny always inherit those alleles from the both the parents and so the progeny can be this one and whereas the other progeny remain unaffected and which means they can be present either in homozygous condition or heterozygous condition. The same the case with the another daughter and homozygous or heterozygous. Here uh, uh, and she married with the another uh, uh, male and the one of the progenies get affected it means that uh, as we are considering it as an autosomal recessive she should also inherit the both the alleles from the both the parents and that means that this daughter in the first progeny should carry that recessive allele and that means she should be uh, heterozygous son. So she should be the heterozygous son. And again it is appearing in this case and this one. So the daughter is again present in a heterozygous condition. So like this it will help us to uh, write the uh, pedigree analysis of the chart. And so if you look at over here she should be the inherit the alleles from the one from the male parent and the one from the female parent so she is in a recessive condition. And whereas the other one remain unaffected that means she should be heterozygous for that character. And so like that it will help us to predict the uh, help us to predict these uh, genotypes and then uh, for the correct answer should can be that of the uh, second option and it is and forms as an uh, given as an autosomal dominant and genetic makeup of the uh, first dominant and so here uh, one of the parent is get affected and uh, uh, all the progeny irrespective of the sex are get affected and so what kind of the uh, disorder if, if all the progeny are get affected irrespective of the sex and uh, one of the parent is get affected autosomal dominant and present in the homozygous condition. And so uh, homozygous condition it is present. So if you are considering it autosomal dominant the disorder one should be it should be homozygous and the other one should be the in recessive condition or the normal one. So because it is get affected it should be the all the progeny that are affected should be present in the heterozygous condition. And so again when the marriage and when the marriage should occur so one of the uh, uh, some of the progeny got affected over here no so uh, they, uh, this daughter married with an unaffected a uh, male and that means all the progeny that are remain unaffected are present in the recessive condition whereas the one which is get affected should be in a heterozygous dominant condition and then move on to the another one and so it is an heterozygous condition married with then a normal female some of the progeny are get affected and all that affected individuals should be in heterozygous condition all the individuals that remain unaffected are in recessive condition and so with that help uh, if you write the genotypes and all with that help it confirms that it is an autosomal dominant and present in a homozygous condition and so whose genotypes of the first generation and the first uh, this is the parental generation the first generation genotypes are uh, the uh, one is a parental generation given and another one is a, a first generation given uh, given and based on that we can able to estimate that whether it is an homozygous or heterozygous if it is a parental generation that is given over here and uh, suppose if it is considered the first generation second and the third generations like this and, and in this first generation they are uh, the homozygous one and the heterozygous one they can be and so which symbol of the predictor is correctly matched and first one is a square it is anyway wrong then the second one is the affected offspring is given and in the third one affected females would be autosomal recessive trait and it is actually the uh, male is given here it is a female that is the option and then in the fourth one marriage between the relatives and yes the both the male and female symbols are get uh, uh, joined by means of the two horizontal line of course it is in between the close relatives and they are called as consanguineous marriages and a genetic disorder is a disease or a syndrome or it is an abnormality that is actually caused and abnormally in the individual's DNA. So it is a disorder or a syndrome which is actually caused and inside the individual's DNA. 
So that is what we call it as the genetic disorders and, and these disorders were first studied by the uh, Garrod is a, scient a scientist and who studied about the autosomal recessive trait called the alcaptonuria. So, which he studied that and the later discovered the various kinds of the genetic disorders and genetic disorders are of two types hereditary disorders are the chromosomal disorders and the syndromes and so these disorders are actually arises due to the uh, defective genes and which follow the uh, Mendelian pattern of inheritance are called as uh, Mendelian disorders or hereditary disorders and, and the Mendelian disorders uh, as you know that they may be autosomal or the allosomal or the dominant or recessive one. Then dendritic disorders are mainly get arises due to the uh, aberrations that arises in case of the chromosomes are due to the polyploidy changes in the chromosomal disorders and, and they are also uh, but there are some of them are remain non hereditary and so uh, they are called as syndromes and chromosomal disorders also can be autosomal or uh, allosomal and so uh, if you look at the uh, say chart for, for example genetic disorders are actually classified into uh, zine disorders and the chromosomal disorders zine disorders can be either autosomal or allosomal chromosomal disorders are again autosomal or allosomal and under this uh, autosomal they can be a dominant recessive under the allosomes also they can be the dominant or recessive one the mendelian disorders and so Mendelian disorders are the genetic uh, diseases and that follow the Mendelian pattern of the inheritance and which are actually caused by uh, a mutation that occurs in case of the uh, structure of the DNA or the a single uh, gene mutation is actually responsible for causing of this kind of the diseases and so sometimes it even can be a single a base a defect and uh, uh, that can cause the pathological uh, consequences and in some cases these Mendelian disorders that is why they are called monogenic diseases and even the single base pair uh, mutations are also responsible for the arising of these kind of the disorders. So they are called as monogenic diseases and so monogenic diseases that runs in the families they may be either present in the dominant or recessive one and they can be autosomal or the allosomal and so uh, with the help of the pedigree chart and the analysis we can able to study these uh, disorders and, and uh, uh, how they are getting inheriting from the one generation to the another generation. And so some of them that are gi uh, given and the most common of them and which are prevalent in the uh, human beings are like hemophilia, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, color blindness, phenylketonuria, thalassemia. Uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and the albinism these are all uh, forms as an example for uh, the um, uh, Mendelian pattern of the inheritance and which follow the Mendelian pattern of inheritance forms as an example for the monogenic diseases or the Mendelian disorders and first one is a uh, hemophilia yeah hemophilia it is a uh, uh, it is actually caused by the uh, deficiency of the factor 8 and the factor 9th and so based on that we uh, classified into hemophilia A and hemophilia B and hemophilia C is also present but it is an autosomal uh, recessive one whereas the first two are uh, X-linked recessive disorders which are caused due to the uh, defect in the synthesis of the factors and that is the 8th factor and the ninth factor eighth factor uh, deficiency we call it as the hemophilia A and the ninth factor deficiency we call it as hemophilia B and so it is also called the bleeders disease and it is uh, actually follow the crisscross pattern of inheritance and or uh, skip one uh, uh, pattern of inheritance as it forms as an example for the uh, uh, example for X linked uh, recessive uh, disorder. And so uh, it, it runs in the uh, Queen uh, Victoria family and shows the uh, number of hemophilic de descendants are present where the uh, females are mostly the carriers in heterozygous condition. So as it forms as an example for X-linked recessive characters most of the uh, males are get affected whereas uh, the females are get affected only in the uh, homozygous condition in heterozygous condition they are called as carriers and in homozygous condition they remain unaffected and so uh, the females uh, as you know that they are called carriers are also we can call them as asymptomatic carriers and so uh, this forms as an example for this one 
move on to the uh, next uh, kind of the disorder that is sickle cell anemia it's one of the most important and we need to see see the uh, in more elaborative manner about this disease so it is an autosomal recessive uh, genetic blood disorder and uh, uh, whenever this disorder acquires uh, no the individuals inside the individuals the rbc cells become uh, an abnormal reset and the sickle cell shape run so the normal rbc cells as you know that they are the dumbbell shaped are present and are the by a convex shaped they are present so uh, they here the rbc cell get changes into the sickle cell shape run so uh, sickle cell especially in case of the hypoxia conditions and whenever the low oxygen tension develops inside so in that case they actually develop and so whatever the cells that are uh, becomes the sickle cell shape they become clump and clog the small blood vessels and, and uh, it leads to the uh, physical weakness and the pain organ damage sometimes even it leads to the paralysis and so these conditions actually appear and so uh, these uh, genes which are responsible for the uh, 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 they are responsible for occurrence of this one undergoes the mutation located in case of the chromosomal 11th and so a single pair of alleles and that are located on the chromosome uh, number 11 they are actually responsible for this one it is an recessive condition and in the dominant condition anyway they remain and that is in the homozygous dominant condition and in homozygous recessive condition and so if you take that hemo, uh, hemoglobin they remain uh, they remain normal but uh, so this is a recessive allele and uh, so homozygous dominant uh, homo uh, heterozygous dominant homozygous recessive in this one they are the remain normal shaped rb cells are present in heterozygous condition also if they got exposed to the hypoxia conditions they may get turned into the sickle cell shape anyway a uh, homozygous recessive case all the cells are uh, present in the uh, by birth only the all the cells remain in a sickle cell shape run so uh, in order to cause this uh, sickle cell anemia at least a pair of allele should be present and two sickle cell uh, allele should be necessary and, uh, uh, to ca to affect this disorder in heterozygous condition also uh, the disorder do not appear but in hypoxia condition again they appear and so uh, persons which are actually presented for the heterozygous uh, sickle cell anemia they can able to lead the healthy life and so uh, sometimes if these individuals for the prolonged period if they got exposed to the reduced oxygen content in the blood and they may suffer from these symptoms of the uh, sickle cell uh, disease and these individuals are responsible in the earlier case these individuals are responsible for the formation of normal rbc cells and uh, as like the dominant and but the, for the prolonged period if they got exposed to the low oxygen content then the cells are slowly started turning into a sickle cell shape and which are responsible for the uh, clumping and the clogging of the blood vessels that leads to uh, that as a result of that the person do not get the sufficient amount of the oxygen so it becomes uh, physically weak pain and also the organs got damaged sometimes it leads to the paralysis condition so uh, sickle cell anemia how it actually occurs and it actually arises as a result of point mutation in the uh, dna it, it, it results in the replacement of the glutamic acid uh, in the sixth position by the uh, a valine and in the beta chain of the hemoglobin as you know that hemoglobin actually carry the two alpha and the two beta chains in that beta chain of that sixth position of the normal rbc cells we have got glutamic acid is present if it is get replaced by a valine due to the point mutation then it turns into sickle cell and and sometimes these in heterozygous condition these sickle cells uh, individual sickles for sickle cell anemia the individuals it will found to be an an advantage yes, and so uh, especially heterozygous individuals are resistant to the uh, resistant to the uh, malaria uh, where it is endemic and so uh, especially for against the falciparum malaria and so even though the heterozygous individuals are carrying this deleterious allele in their genome uh, genome and uh, they are actually uh, resistant for this falciparum uh, malaria so carrying of that deleterious uh, allele in the entire the uh, population is what we call it as genetic load and we anyway we study in the topic called the evolution and so malaria endemic uh, areas heterozygous individuals are resistant to malarial parasite effect and 
Now it is identified that both the uh, dominant allele as well as the recessive alleles are usually helpful for the survival of that individual as it is advantageous. So we can regard it as both are useful to the individuals uh, in that malaria endemic regions both recessive allele are the dominant. We can call it as, as a, a co-dominant uh, uh, case. And let us uh, look at the uh, a, a diagram that is actually given and so in the beta chain of a normal hemoglobin and the beta chain of a sickle cell hemoglobin in that sixth position over here glutamic acid is present whereas in the sixth uh, position of that one a valine is present and how it actually occurs and so in the genetic code uh, of the normal RBC cell in you see that one uh, gag is a CTC GAZ these are the uh, two strands of the DNA are uh, present from which the undergoes the transcription to form the mRNA in that it codes for the GAZ which codes for the glutamic acid. And so as a result of the point mutation over here and uh, in place of the thymine A and in place of the A thymine is get replaced so that single base pair mutation and C is actually responsible for making the replacement of glutamic acid with the valine and see that one the, the code that is actually the uh, single base pair that is get mutated over here in place of that one the GUG is get coded so which code for the uh, valine so leads to the uh, sickle shell shaped cells are formed from the normal RBC cells. And then let us move on to the another uh, disorder called phenylketonuria. So this phenylketonuria was actually first uh, discovered by a uh, folding and this is uh, forms as an example for autosomal recessive metabolic genetic disorder and, and the gene which is responsible for uh, uh, the uh, affected uh, undergoing the mutation actually located on the chromosome 12th and so uh, this uh, in a normal condition it is responsible for the transcription of an enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase and so this is an enzyme which is actually uh, 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 produced in case of the normal individuals and so in case of the affected are the mutant individuals this as a result of the mutation this enzyme is not produced and so lack of the uh, this enzyme uh, is resp uh, lack of this enzyme is uh, responsible for unable to convert this uh, phenylalanine into tyrosine and so phenylalanine is not actually get converted into the uh, tyrosine so as a result of that phenylalanine started accumulating and it is get converted into phenyl pyruvate and so that accumulation inside the uh, brain especially and causes the mental retardation and so the only the uh, way to get to treat this disease is uh, giving the uh, diet with a low amount of phenyl alanine and so that can be a, a, a that prevent the major mental retardation and move on to the another one color blindness and so color blindness as a color vision deficiency and it is also a forms as an example for the x-linked recessive disorder or the x-linked recessive disorder and it is an inability or a decreased ability to see the certain colors and or at least unable to perceive the uh, differences between the different colors and now this phenotypic trait is due to the mutation in the genes that are located on x chromosome and, and uh, X chromosome and the common forms of the uh, color blindness are based on the kind of the color in which you are unable to get distinguished based on that they are classified and for example red chloral blindness is called the protonopia and the uh, 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 protonopia and the deuteronopia is the uh, another one and uh, blue color blindness is a tri tritonopia and so they are the so protonopia is the red color blindness and the deuteronopia is the green color blindness that you uh, come across over here and uh, this is the uh, uh, green uh, color blindness tritonopia is the blue color blindness and so in the protonopia and the deuteronopia these two are actually the x linked recessive uh, disorders whereas the tritonopia is the blue color blindness this is an autosomal recessive uh, disorder again and so uh, what is the test and that uh, actually helpful uh, for us an individual to get it detect this kind of the disorder that we call it as a Ishara test and uh, with which uh, we will help us to diagnose the red and green color uh, blindness and then coming to the another kind of the disorder which is an another important one that is thalassemia. So uh, thalassemia it is an uh, autosomal uh, recessive uh, blood disorder and now uh, this disease is actually caused by the excessive destruction of the RBC uh, cells and due to the formation of an abnormal hemoglobin. And 
Now, hemoglobin actually composed as we uh, uh, studied previously also, and as it is composed of four uh, polypeptide chains are present in which two are alpha and the two are uh, beta. And so, uh, the patients who are actually suffering from the uh, thalassemia maybe uh, has got the defects in the alpha chains or uh, also in the beta chain or sometimes in the both the chains also uh, the defect can be presented. So, the affected people uh, make the less hemoglobin and uh, uh, fewer RBC cells in the circulating blood are present. So, that leads to the anemic condition. So, in case of the alpha thalassemia, the production of the alpha chains is actually get affected and because alpha chain synthesis, a alpha chain synthesis is under the control of the one gene and the beta chains uh, is under the control of the uh, beta chains are control of the another gene. So, based on the way the in which gene uh, the mutation occurs, the kind of the thalassemia also get changes. And if the less number of the alpha chains are get affected, it means that alpha gene is actually get affected. And so, this alpha gene synthesis genes are located on chromosome 16 and whose alleles are HB S1 and HB A21, which are actually located on chromosome 16. And so, mutation or deletion of one or more alleles. And so, depending on that, the genes are actually get affected. And so, more the genes are get affected, uh, less the uh, alpha chains are get synthesized. And so, uh, less the alpha chains are synthesized, more the severity of that disease will occur. And then move on to the uh, beta thalassemia which is also called as Coolis anemia. So, production of beta chains is get affected and so beta thalassemia is actually controlled by the single gene that is HBB uh, that is located on chromosome 11 which you already studied in case of the sickle cell anemia. So, it occurs due to the mutation of one or both alleles and gene is one alleles are two one. For example, uh, they are located on uh, for beta synthesis gene is HBB whose alleles are located on chromosomal 11th pair and uh, alpha genes that gene is the one whose alleles are located on the 16th pair. And so, mutation in the one allele or the two alleles based on that the number of the chains are get affected. And so, out of the alpha and the beta thalassemia, the most common type of the thalassemia is the beta thalassemia. And so, in this disorder the alpha chains which are produced and excess and so, because less number of the beta chains are uh, uh, produced, so, uh, so more alpha chains are pr present and so these produced alpha chains excessively that they start binding to the RBCs and the damage uh, the uh, responsible for causing the damage them. So, in that way the, the patients become anemic and another kind of the disorder is cystic fibrosis and cystic fibrosis is also uh, an autosomal recessive genetic disorder and so, it actually results uh, uh, as, as a result of the mutation occurs in the long arm of the chromosome 7. And as you know that the chromosome has got the two arms are present the centromere short arm and the long arm. So, this is the short arm, this is a long arm. So, in the long arm of that chromosome the mutation occurs and as a result of that the salt and water movement across the epithelial membranes and of the those cells are mainly get affected. And so, uh, as a result of that it, it increases the uh, sodium and the chloride content in the sweat and so increased sodium and the chloride content especially in the sweat and the increased reabsorption of sodium and water from the respiratory epithelium occurs and let us move on to the uh, chromosomal disorders and chromosomal disorders are actually arises as a result of errors occurs in the number or structure of a chromosome. So far we studied the uh, disorders with respect to the uh, genes and but whereas the in these the, the whole chromosome may be get affected or the number of chromosomes may be get affected and so aneuploid is the chromosomal aberration where there is a gain or the loss of one or the more chromosomes and so loss or addition and aneuploidy is actually the not exact multiple of the diploid set of chromosomes and n is an haploid 2n is a diploid and sometimes uh, in, in a nucleoidy not exact multiple of not exact multiple of the uh, haploid set of chromosomes. It may be like haploid diploid. So, to an, uh, an addition sometimes or even the uh, addition of the two chromosomes or sometimes deletion of the one chromosome or even the deletion of the two chromosomes. All these are the nucleoid conditions and 
a nuploidy always arises as a result of non distinction of the chromosomes and especially in the uh, it, during the meiosis process at the time of the gametic formation of anaphase 1 and anaphase 2 stages where the chromosomes started moving uh, towards their opposite poles some of the chromosomes and are the number of the chromosomes are their arms and uh, are their chromatids especially sometimes and in the anaphase 2 and they do not apart and so not apart so they are not separated and they are not equally get segregated and so separation or segregation or apart whatever you call it as that do not occur properly and if do not occur properly the separation then we call it as non distinction separation we call it as separation or distinction if they do not uh, separate properly we call it as a non distinction so due to this non distinction also any ploidy condition arises which also uh, forms as an example for a chromosomal disorders among them there are the autosomals are present and the allosomal disorders are again they are present and some of the uh, uh, allosomal disorders that is affects in the uh, sex chromosomes the first one is a klinefelter syndrome and so the klinefelter syndrome it is actually caused by the trisomy of 23rd pair and so 23rd pair is actually the sex chromosomes that is xx another x3 uh, another x may be get added in the diploidy or xxy and that means the number of the chromosomes can be the uh, the 47 and that's why the karyotype that we'll write over here is 47 xxy and so a clean filter uh, a male actually responsible for carrying the uh, normal male carries the one x chromosome and one y chromosome but as a clean filter male carries the an addition of another one x chromosome and that is due to the aneuploidy and uh, and the affected individual actually shows the hypogonadism with a reduced fertility and the whereas the female as a result of that uh, and, and the addition of the one x chromosome is present the feminine uh, sexual development is not suppressed completely and, and the gynecomastia is also what we see in, uh, in case of this condition and uh, because of the two x in, in usually in case of the males the bar bodies are absent but clean filter uh, males show the positive condition for the bar bodies and so they are bar bodies are present and if you look at the clean filtered male clearly seen that gynecomastia present and the, some of the feminine characters are also not totally get suppressed and in case of this individual and move on to the another kind of the disorder that is the turner syndrome and in case of the turner syndrome it is due to the uh, uh, monosomy of 23rd pair and so loss of the one of the uh, chromosome in case and so only the x chromosome is present all the autosomes are normally present one of the allosome is missing and so that is x chromosome is present and only one x chromosome is present so feminine characters are uh, uh, developed and so the karyotype is 45 with an x o and it is due to the monosome of 23rd pair and so they are remain females and usually females show the a uh, positive for the bar bodies and but the turner females are negative for the bar bodies and so symptoms are usually like they are provided with a uh, short stretcher is present in case of the uh, feminine characters and the gonadal dysgenesis is also uh, present in case of that one and the uh, Weber neck is present and the broad shield like chest and uh, widely spaced nipples are also present these are the some of the uh, symptoms uh, that are the appear in case of the Turner's female and these are the allosomal disorders and let's move on to the uh, autosomal chromosomal disorders and they are more actually more common in case of the children who are actually born uh, uh, to the such a woman who actually conceive the babies uh, later in their reproductive phase and so if they are started conceiving in the uh, late part of their uh, reproductive uh, phase uh, then the, uh, there is a uh, every chance of giving birth to this uh, uh, kind of the uh, children and which usually suffer from this kind of the disorders and so some of them are for example down syndrome that is a trisomy uh, it is due to the presence of an additional copy of the chromosome uh, on the 21st and so and one chromosome is get added on the 21st so that that we we call it as trisomy and so we write the karyotype as 47 xx plus 21st and plus 21 means an addition of the one chromosome is added on that one so the in, uh, affected individuals are usually the short stretcher they are present and uh, a round head furrowed tongue is present and the partially open mouth and so these are the some of the symptoms based on which we can able to indicate the uh, down syndrome and in addition to that the physical and the psychomotor and the mental development is uh, is also uh, retarded and so in case of this uh, down's syndrome and so see that one the whatever the individuals and broad flat face big and wrinkled tongue is present 
congenital heart diseases, flat back on the head, many loops on the uh, fingertips are present. These are all the some of the chromosome. If you look at in that karyotypic of the chart, you can see that on the one edition of the uh, 21st chromosome is also a uh, seen. And uh, in case of the Edwards syndrome, the karyotype we call it as 47 and uh, XX plus 18 means an addition of uh, the one chromosome uh, on the 18th. And so, due to that extra copy of that uh, chromosome and so genetic material on the 18th chromosome, either in whole or the part of that one and which actually occurs due to the translocation. And so, Edwards syndrome, it is a more prevalent in case of the female offspring usually and, uh, when compared to that of the male progeny. And so, majority of the people uh, with this syndrome usually die and the, during the fetal stages itself. And so, the infants who actually experience and are the survive experience with a certain kinds of the abnormalities like the cardiac and the kidney malfunction and commonly live for the very short period of the time and so uh, uh, usually die after the birth and, and more uh, uh, the female children are usually get affected and then uh, another kind of the disorder is Pato syndrome and uh, that is a trisomy on the 13th chromosome and so 47 chromosome an addition of the one chromosome on the 13th results from the an extra copy of uh, the 13th chromosome. So, individuals with the 13th uh, edition of the chromosome usually suffer from the heart and the kidney defects and at the brain and the spinal cord abnormalities and, and very small or poorly developed eyes are present that we, we, we call it as micro ophthalmia and, and the cleft palate is also present and in fact with also uh, this affected with this disorder usually die in early stages and like within the days or the weeks of their birth usually they will uh, die and uh, last one is uh, the Criduchart syndrome uh, that is a 5p monosomy or 5p minus syndrome and it is the uh, actually the cat cry and it's a partially or the deletion of short on that chromosome and so that's why the number of the chromosome remain the same that is a 46 are present and the both are xx but in the fifth chromosome one short arm uh, from that short arm it is get lost and so that uh, 5p means the partial loss or the deletion of the uh, short arm that chromosome and so the affected individuals like cat cry uh, especially the the why the cat cry like the sound usually comes out now it is due to that the larynx is actually get affected and and uh, also the nervous system is also got affected and so infants are mentally retarded and the small head with the uh, unusual uh, facial features are present and, and they also uh, die in the early childhood or in the uh, infancy and some of the questions if you let's move on to this one and a normally visioned man whose father was color blind and the married uh, a woman whose father was also uh, color blind and they have the first child as a daughter whereas uh, the chances that child would be a uh, color blind and how can you able to predict that one and a normal vision man and man if you take that one of course x y he's uh, a normal vision and he's a normal vision means it carries the uh, capital uh, c l l and whose father